Hi, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the Ask a Medium radio show. I am your host, Reverend Ivy Rivera, psychic medium, coming to you from the Ivy League Psychic Academy in Amherst, New York, where we are raising up the next generation of lightworkers. I am here with my beautiful co-host, Teresa Matuzak. How are you, Trey? I'm wonderful. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. <laughs> the weather is calming, so we're much happier this week. Yeah, and uh, lucky to be here. I lost my voice yesterday. We did a great event. Uh, this weekend over at the Statler Towers, a uh, huge psychic fair, biggest psychic fair in Western New York, and I woke up with nothing yesterday to speak with, so we're just uh, happy to be here rolling along. We have a special guest with us tonight, Dr. James Pilk, America's meditation doctor, and uh, he will be uh, taking your questions later in the show. Uh, Teresa and I will also uh, be taking your questions, psychic, mediumship, paranormal, lost objects. You guys can start texting those in to 716 716- Six zero two one three nine one, and I'll give that one more time. Seven one six six zero two one three nine one, or you can go on to Facebook and put in the search bar "Ask a Medium" and "Para X Radio" will pop up. You can post your questions there as well, whether they're for Doctor Pilk or they're for us. Uh, we'll be getting to the, to uh, the more psychic questions near the end of the show. So, um, Doctor Pilk, how are you tonight? It's good to have you. Wonderful. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for coming. Um, we want to talk tonight about healing without. Pain. I want to say that, uh, you know, Dr. Pilk was an OBGYN uh, doctor for about 24 years and um, went through some very unique experiences, which led you sort of out of that field into more light work. And uh, since then, uh, he's become a published author of uh, two different books. I know he's working on a third. Uh, his first book was called Unstuck, The Enlightenment of Medicine. His second book was uh, A Path to Ourselves, An Introduction to Meditation. He also has uh, assistance for children in meditation, including a Ruku doll that aids in, uh, gives them something to hold on to and and work with, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, But he also has three meditation CDs, whether you're a child, a beginner, or you're advanced. And so you guys can uh, find those at the Ivy League Psychic Academy, but also on your website, they can order yeah, okay. The meditation doctor.com. Meditation. Um, sorry, America's meditation doctor.com. America's meditation doctor.com. If you guys want to order these. Um, and then the new book that you have coming up is called Beyond, mm-hmm. correct? Correct. Interesting. Okay. Now, you know, Dr. Pelk, you were here for a four part uh, meditation series, uh, what, about a month ago, I believe, uh, at the Ivy League Psychic Academy, and um, everybody just loved it and learned so much, and it was growing week by week. Um, really phenomenal experience for everybody who came in here, and we were really focused on spiritual evolution and healing the self, and I know that your your focus on so much in life in general and with your light work is really geared toward um, how do I want to say, you know, resolving your, your life of the pain, that everything doesn't have to be a painful drag of an experience to get to a place of enlightenment and healing. Exactly. Can you give a little background on how exactly you got to that place? Sure. Well, I started out, as you described, as being an, an OBGYN, so an obstetrician gynecologist, performing, doing Western medicine. Um, and then I was diagnosed with my own issues, and one was bone marrow cancer. And so I found a way to heal using Western medicine, but also seeing Eastern medicine, and then this meditative healing being beneficial, so bringing light, divine light to ourselves. And so first resolving a bone marrow cancer, healing from that, um, but having a significant amount of pain, but then searching for what was my life's lesson in the bone marrow cancer? What did I need to learn? What was, again, the life lesson so I can check that off my list? So. I can spiritually evolve. So eventually I can check out all of my lessons and say, when I'm done here, I can get out of this karmic cycle and say, I can be one again with God. But sort of reversing, pulling back again, the first path is the path of pain. So we could say, okay, bone marrow cancer, a lot of pain in the back. What is the message behind it? Do meditation, get messages, psychic messages, divine messages, and God slash spirit can tell us, okay, here's your life's lesson. Here's what you have to learn, whether it's forgiveness, 
whether it's grace, whether it's mercy, and what is it? Okay? And as you said in this series, it was this combination between spiritual evolution and healing. Right. So these two parallel. And so as we evolve spiritually, our body heals. But initially, I was looking down this path of pain. So I would have back pain, and I'd say, okay, so what's the message behind that? And I'd have stomach pain. Then I would have heart pain, and I'd have head pain. And I thought, why do I keep looking to the pain and suffering for my answers? Right. And I said, I am essentially, after I went through a laundry list of pain and suffering, and sort of looking at myself as a hypochondriac, if you look at it in the Western world, but going through and say, okay, now I'm learning this lesson, I'm learning this lesson. Big lessons being self-love, self-protection, creating boundaries. Okay? But then I said, okay, I'm done with waiting for the next pain to come along for me to learn the next lesson. Okay? So now I'm going to move over and say, I want pain, I want comfort and peace to teach me now. So this is a lot about it in my second book. I talk, here's the second path. My second path is to say, I'm going to be at a place of comfort and peace and go into the meditative space or connect with spirit or connect with God and say, okay, what next? I don't have to learn through pain anymore. Tell me what my next lesson is. How do I next evolve? Well, hallelujah. I think that's yeah. been a big topic. Um, you know, the, the last few months in my own life, personally, I've been asking a lot of questions about, you know, can can I just evolve? Can my life move forward without a chaotic face? Right. right? right. And and when you're dealing with pain in the manner that you're saying, because you had a serious health, you know, condition. I mean, cancer is a sure. battle. And so as you're dealing with that, would it be fair to say that probably most people just look to the pain instead of the lessons because it can almost be too many lessons. You're thinking how many lessons can be involved in right, this, right. but it's true. Yes. There are lessons in everything. Right, right. And so unfortunately, the pain really grabs our attention in this human condition. So many people are focused on the pain, but they stop at the pain mm -hmm. instead of looking beyond the pain to say, okay, what is the lesson beyond this pain? How can this pain serve me? Okay. Yes. Instead of looking at it as saying it's a burden, it's horrible and I'm, I'm suffering from it. Let's move beyond the pain, get rid of the pain, learn from the pain, and then turn to the peace and comfort. Okay, like you said, and don't look to the chaos or the suffering. Because that's one of the belief systems, not one of many belief systems, will say pain and suffering just is. Accept it. Live with it. Well, well I, I'm here to say I don't buy it anymore. Okay, I did it. I did it for a while. Yeah. Oh, life sure. has to be chaotic. Life has to be pain. Life has to be suffering. Just live with it. Figure it out. You know, I, I'm here to say that I've seen where I've been able to shift from that sense of the majority of my life being pain and suffering, shifting to the sense of peace and comfort 95% of the time. Okay. So when you said that you started to um, find ways to live in this peace and comfort, did you find that in that transition, it had a lot to do with maybe predicting things that were coming mm -hmm communicating with spirit on a more um, regular basis. I mean, absolutely. what was involved? So, the, right, the shift was um, evolving spiritually. So developing our ability to connect psychically or spiritually to get ahead of the pain cycle. So get ahead of the pain process where asking spirit, what am I supposed to do next? Okay, being able to do that. So to be able to do that, you have to evolve like this school does, helps people to evolve psychically, to connect, to be able to ask the questions and get the answers. And in the healing that I do, that has, that's the majority of my practice. People coming in and saying, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. Saying, so people coming into my practice and saying, you know, they're coming and saying, I have cancers, I have chronic back pain. Mm -hmm. And then saying, I need to find the answers through it. Okay. okay. Through the pain. So help me to find the answers. And so I went through hundreds of different healings, and that's what we do. We take people into the meditative space, specifically focused on the pain that they're having, and saying, okay, what life trauma did you experience that you haven't yet to let go of and bring divine light to it? When we bring divine light to it, we have an understanding or a shift in perception, which is very much Course in Miracles. Okay. What is the miracle? The miracle is the shift in the understanding or the perception of our reality. Mm -hmm. okay. When we shift that understanding and bring divine light to it, we move beyond the pain. And then we realize, again, that we can go to the meditative space and say, okay, God, spirit, show me what do I need to heal, who I need to heal with in the divine light minus the pain. Mm -hmm. Then we get very specific in the healing that we're doing. 
that was one of the uh, m- most major awakenings, I want to say, in here when uh, you were uh, talking with the talking with the you know students, and they were they were coming in week to week, okay, to learn different you know different things about meditation, self healing. Um, becoming pain free, but they every week they journeyed inward, and they were discovering more about the connections in their lives with other people, situations uh, that are affecting them physically, mentally, emotionally, as well as past life um, connection was right. very interesting. And right. one of the things that I enjoyed the most was seeing how because um, I do something similar with my psychic mediumship training, but you can find particular parts in the body from spirit's guidance with you, right, through your own meditation. And a specific pain in one part of the body could very well be linked to a relationship with the in-laws or a past life connection to something else. And the body was just literally, the way you were teaching it, it was a roadmap. It was like, here you are, lower back, that's an in-law issue, you were together in a past life, da-da-da-da-da, here's the solution, and people were getting free. Right. No medication, no big tattoo, it's just getting free. It really, really was phenomenal and fun. And and there's the healing without the pain, right? So you use your intuitive nature to say, okay, here's the message behind the pain because, like you said, it's connected to a person, could be past life, could be present life. And when we resolve the issue with that person, bring divine light to it, the pain goes away permanently. Yes. Like you said, no pills. (laughs) Right. Wow. It's That's amazing. Energy. Yeah. It's energy. You know, it's, it's energy. Um, so you you really call this more, you know, the path of pain and suffering versus the path of peace and comfort. I love that. And, um, you know, how do we use meditation um, to learn our life's lesson? I know this is something that you uh, talk about a lot on the path. Okay. To, um, I want to say, you know, the peace and comfort um, how can we use meditation? A lot of people have trouble with meditation, do they not? I mean, they yes. think they can't sit there. Right. And it's like force-feeding medicine. But the right. way that you do it, I just want to say this for the listeners, the way that Dr. Pill, I can meditate with Dr. Pill. Uh, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's it's not just sitting there and having to sit still and, and waiting for something. You lead it, and it works. But there's right. also something very effective about your voice, and you're on the Thank right you. path. You. you know, so, I mean, that's a big part of it, because not anybody could do it that way. Um, but can you explain a little bit sure. about meditation? Sure. Now, um, meditation, um, essentially, there's different, there's different ways to meditate. And I, I do many presentations describing meditation um, from mindfulness to meditative self-healing. And some people are able to do mindfulness where they keep their mind still and quiet. Okay. I cannot do that. Okay. I, I can do it for about either. three seconds. <laughs> yes. okay. So the guided meditation for me is really good because it allows our active mind to be active and the fast racing thoughts to be racing and to be quick. And then we are able to process quickly. So those of us who can think very quickly and the mind runs very quickly, we can take advantage of the information that drops in and process it well. So that's like people who are psychic or who have the spirit the spiritual gift or everybody has a spiritual gift but who have developed the spiritual gift to mm-hmm. communicate with spirit. And for me, the way that mind had developed was be, by doing so much meditation. It was six solid months of this intense meditation and I found at the end I was able to connect very, very well with with spirit or with God and get messages instantaneously. And this is how I use, this is what I use when someone sits down across from me and says, I have back pain. What is the core causative agent? What is the issue, like the lower back pain, and it's connected to the in-laws? But it's very specific. Some people may have lower back pain, and for them, it's the in-laws. The next person that comes in, they have the same exact pain, it'll be different. It'll be... A spouse, it'll be a sister, mm-hmm. that the issue is is a conflict from the past or present that's going on that needs to be resolved, not through the people talking and discussing and stirring the poisons. It's actually healing in the divine space to let go of the negativity and then protecting yourself and creating boundaries for the future. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, yeah. And ta- uh, there we go again with the lessons. Right. Because right. these can be, and I do believe, and you know, that we're reborn with the same people. Ball, yes, over yes. and over and over, we keep yes. doing this. So again, with the lessons, I mean, and and the body having you know physical pain uh, can this, certainly be an indicator on the path to peace. And this is how we can also um, decrease um, the number of 
lifetimes that we have to run through. So if we have this ability to say, if we have 50 lessons to learn in our cycle of lifetimes, and we can only on average learn one or two in a normal lifetime, mm -hmm. and we can say now, I can take care of all 50 in one. <laughs> Holy cow, we can go back to God <laughs> again, join one again. Oh my God! Thank you. Who knew? Right. Uh, right. Who thunk it? Yeah, right. we have a lot of work to do. I know. Um, right. <laughs> well, I do. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really you know should be the focus. Um, now, you know this this is interesting too because we know that while it's a drag, okay, to have to learn these lessons, we chose to come here. Right. 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 You know, we're not going to cross over it's, as a medium. I know you're not going to cross over the other side and get a free ticket in. Right. When right. you get in there, right. you've agreed to let go mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, darkness. You've right. agreed to evolve and learn and be, you know, part of that process. So it's never going to end anyways. So we all chose to come here, right? Yeah. So we have to go through these lessons. We have to go through the pain. Um, you talk a lot about how the pain can serve us right. in propelling us um you know, forward. And I want you to talk a little bit more on that, but also on, uh, I want to hear a little bit more about your journey going more into the spiritual world, coming oh, sure. from an OBGYN <laughs> medical sure. type of an atmosphere into that. Can you sure. sort of talk about that a bit? Sure. Well, that was um, an interesting challenge. Um, as I started out in the Western world, which of course is very linear, very focused on the physical being and very focused on the disease process. And that's essentially 10% of what we need to focus on. And then there's another 90% which focuses on energy and then the spiritual emotional issues. Mm -hmm. And this is where when I started hitting the spiritual emotional issues and having to find out how to heal myself, I looked into, okay, what I call now fusion medicine is I said, so I'm moving from only attending to the disease process in the physical body and OBGYN. And then I moved to saying, well, what if we add in an Eastern philosophy? What if we add in um, chiropractics or massage therapy or Reiki mm -hmm. or anything like that as far as the second component to healing? And then our third is this spiritual emotional piece, healing the traumas, emotional traumas we've had in the past or that are currently happening or that are in past lifetimes. Okay? Right. So we can even go in, bring divine light to a prior life issue and create this healing. But here, that, what I've been talking about right now is all of that following the disease, following the pain. Okay? And that's not a horrible thing. We can get out of this karmic cycle. Okay? We can end, the, reach our last lifetime by following the pain the whole time. We could, because it keeps giving us the message. Exactly. We, could. we, we really it. could. We could. Yeah. And we can keep Yay, and more people, pain. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, I make this joke a lot that anytime I have three kids, so anytime something bad happens, I'm like, you're about to move up a level. Right. You're right. anytime right. there's a storm, I'm like, there's something good coming right behind right. it. You just right. have to find, find message in storm. what it is. Right. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. But then we say, okay, it, that is one path. And obviously God is, is infinitely omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, could create a different path for us. Or we, because we can create our own worlds, can create another path. And so why should we keep choosing that path of pain and suffering? Let's choose the alternative path. Let's choose the path of comfort and ease mm -hmm. and learn. So before something chaotic happens, again, let's jump in and speak with spirit and say, okay, before the chaos hits, before the storm hits, Tell me what I need to do resolve, to resolve the pain before it happens. Some people are getting to the point of saying, well, if that's the case, we could get into preventative medicine. Sure could. Right. right. What do you know? Right. So if I, do I have something in my body energetically that needs to be expelled before it causes a cancer, before mm -hmm. it causes a disease mm -hmm. process? Right. Right. Get ahead of the pain. Yeah, let's get ahead of the game. I mean, we've been lagging for so long. We really do. It's it's quite it's quite amazing. Um, it, it seems like common sense, but we've been out of touch. Right. You know, right. for so long uh, as a society, as a world, you know, we've gotten so far from our spirituality. Um, now, you know, what's coming up next? And and, and I I want to talk about this little guy here, this little I, yeah, stuffed animal here exactly. in it. Exactly. In a staring me down i love this little thing <laughs> yeah what what exactly is going on with him and then i want to hear about your new book sure. um that's coming up yeah i would like to know too he is just the greatest little little guy here and, and um i want to have you talk about him and then sure. we'll we'll go in from there okay sure 
Um, the, the little guy we're talking about is um, Ruku, and he's a, a meditative butter, not butter, but <laughs> meditative buddy. Um, or I a, wish you guys could see this. He has like healing buddy. Four different colors of hair. You know, he's, he's adorable. He has fur coming right. out of him. Yeah, he's up on the he's website. On the I website, have him on yeah. it, on Dr. Polk's. Is it mm-hmm. on mine as well? Yes. Okay, yes. it's also on the Ivy League. But yeah, it, he okay. looks like a baby toy, but there's some uh, interesting shapes. Well, he's so soft. <laughs> he started out as, um, essentially, I, made, I created a, a meditation CD for children. Um, and my, my boys listened to it and love the CD, and they still ask for it every night because it helps them sleep, and it helps them calm down. And I have um, the autistic services um, in different cities that are taking advantage of the CD and seeing benefit even with children with challenges as well as children with other challenges. Okay? But my boys listened to it and said, my older son said, you know what, Dad, I think we need a meditation buddy. And he drew him. And my other son came downstairs, saw the drawing, and said, his name is Ruku, which means, which we didn't know this, but after we looked it up, it's Javanese for peace. Aww. So it's That's now wonderful. this buddy has been created, and I was told spiritually created and energetically created for healing. So he has this sense of um, the chakras, the rainbow colors of the chakras, and when you hold him, you can actually tell that you're your um, chakras are being balanced or opened as you hold them and look into his eyes. Mm -hmm. You can feel each one popping. So there's this healing that even he will create when you're holding him. I definitely, when I come into the academy, like, I don't know, every day almost, and sometimes it feels like (laughs) my eyes are immediately drawn to the table where he sits. Yeah. And it's like whatever chaotic thing is going on in my head, I I literally relax for like maybe Mm -hmm. two minutes. And then I'm like back to being where I was, but... It's very very peaceful around him in that area where he sits on the table. And I have to say, too, is uh, one of my questions was regarding children with different um, learning disabilities and so forth. There's, there's so many things going up with the autism and then ADHD and ADD. And there's this other thing I'm learning about and reading about, which is called the Edison gene. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I've heard of it, but I'm not too familiar. My, my husband <laughs> is, is one who has it. We have a nephew who has it. And ah. it's these children who are just have genius levels of thought and they can literally multitask 10 things in their head at one time but simple tasks are almost impossible like putting away laundry so i was going to ask with this little guy right here plus the meditation cd exactly how does like that balance them out and exactly how does that get them to clear their mind clear their minds well um as far as the edison's disease or but the the children that um, have been cited for meditation so basic meditation if you look at it as even just mindfulness um, it has been shown to be beneficial for um, creating longer focus um, ability to read longer after having done the meditation um, we've seen on these observational studies recently that when children um, have even ruku in the room itself their ability to read is longer maintain focus um, maintain what they've just learned by doing the meditation. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the sense of less worrying. And I've seen that with my son and other children. Um, anxiety levels will decrease. Um, like you mm-hmm. said, focus mm-hmm. is improved, especially with children who are fortunately or unfortunately tagged with this hyperactivity, um, att- attention deficit challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been beneficial for mm-hmm. all groups of children. And that, that is amazing. one of my favorite topics is that especially with empathic ability, and I know we've talked about this before and I've interviewed you, you know, for the book I'm writing on empathic ability, um, with empathic ability and so much energy coming in all the time, that in itself is such a distraction. Right. So immediately it's ADD, immediately it's right. anxiety, immediately it's, you know, let's, let's get the meds. And uh, through meditation, they're also doing exactly what, you know, what you learn to do when you were coping with the cancer they're receiving the messages they're learning the lessons they're allowing the information from the universe god their spirits to come down through them they're just allowing it to come and it's like downloading right you know and it goes from being this over absorption of boisterous energy that becomes a disorder into uh clarity clarity of mind and it's really it's really quite phenomenal because as hard as it is for some of us to sit through an entire meditation 
you can train your mind just to go to that place. Right. You eventually, once you've done it a few times, you don't have to sit and go through the whole ceremonial part. You know, right. you just go to that part of your brain and you can calm and self-soothe and, and heal without the pain. And it's the, amazing. I think that's the same space I found. That's the same space that mediums or psychics yes. can, can drop into in a moment's time. Yes. They mm-hmm. connect right there. So people who do the meditation, who do this meditative self-healing, they become their own medium. So they go into that space, they connect, and people who have, like you and me, of the three of of us, or maybe more in this room, um, who can um, drop into the space in an instant. Yep. And it it shrinks, so the latency period from when you meditate could be 20 minutes to get into that space versus a blink. Absolutely. And you're into that space, and then you can ask the questions, and you get the answers. And that's, um, people really do need to know that. Yes. You know, meditation doesn't have to be a big, long process. And it was always the same thing with mediumship. We were told it took 10 to 15 years. And, right. you know, it was so much meditation. You can, in a heartbeat, once you've learned how to go over there a few times, mm-hmm. you know, and that will help people to feel like they're not, um, you know, being forced to take their medicine here. And as you put it so well, I think there was so much of um, teaching people to be, to connect. Mm-hmm. And challenges with hyperactivity and their minds racing is you create this ability for the brain to process better and to take Absolutely. all that information and filter it down. Well, people don't know it's information. They just think it's right. energy. Right. They sweat. They get migraines. You know, their stomach's upset. They, you know, they have anxiety. They don't know. But that's what, that's what it is. It's, it's information uh, coming in. It's an opportunity. Again, but, you know, people think psychic mediumship is you know, fun. And there are a lot of side effects to this, you know, (laughs) but again, it's for healing purposes. There are always healing messages in there waiting to come out. I I was going to say too, is that I would uh, um, assume, and you could probably clarify, like with starting children out with Ruku here and with the CD and stuff and children who do have like the autistic, um, you know, disabilities and different things like that, like having him available at a young age that helps them to easily, I would assume, transcend into teenage years and adult years and just able to take care of those situations that are hurting them really. That's an excellent point because it's the question of what do we, essentially, what do we do with our children who have these abilities? Do we, do we quote, force them into connecting and reading and predicting futures or, or um, predicting sort of problems? We definitely don't encourage that. This is the sense of we, we affirm them and say if they can see things or if they, we affirm that this is real and the information that's coming in is real. We don't discredit them, but we certainly don't help, we don't force them until they're, or encourage them really until they're 16 to say, let's connect with spirit because there are so many challenging negative energies that can be influence them earlier. So mm-hmm. when they're 16, then we can manipulate chi, then we can manipulate soul and spirit. But until then, like the meditation CD is not to develop a child's psychic abilities. And um, it's, it's more so to bring them to relaxation right. and help their mind to relax and connect with the divine, but not mm. pulling spirit from the body and, and taking a journey on its own. It's just relaxation and enjoyment. Absolutely. And, and that's something we, yeah, that's something we focus on here a lot is right. uh, accepting. Right. You know, exactly. embracing it. It's yeah. good. Yeah, you know, it's it's good. And it and you know, they're it's funny to watch them when they're that young because we take them here as early as six, mm-hmm. but they uh you know, they're playing games with it right. and right. they're exactly. realizing they're that supporting. they think they're right, yeah. but if someone else in the room says something else, they're about to reverse on what they just thought was right. So they right. they have the intuition dead on mm-hmm. and then they're easily influenced and they go, right. oh, I should have gone back to that. I should have picked my first answer. So it's trusting yourself. And most of the time it's stammered, unfortunately, by because of fear in yes. this human community, I guess. Um, it, and they'll say, you're not seeing anything and that's not right and why are you thinking that way? And that's not what we need to do with our children. We just have to support them, tell them, like you said, you're right, listen to your intuition. Um, and that, as you have been said all along, is that will not create disease, though. That won't create exactly. anxiety. It will allow for wellness mm. if we encourage this. I pulled over frantically to the side of the road about two days ago because I, a, a radio show ended up, you know, while I was driving in the car, I almost got stuck. I couldn't seem to get off this channel. And uh, a 14-year-old uh, kid 
had called in and said, I uh, wanted to talk to this doctor of this radio show. And he said, I have 12 spirits that are around me all the time. And they um, show me things and, you know, they talk to me. And uh, he said, as I've gotten older, um, there are some of them that I see more and, you know, mm. but they're all still really around. Right. And the doctor immediately uh, told him, you know, you're not being completely honest with your parents. You need to come clean mm -hmm. and you need more than the ADD medicine that you've oh, been no. put on and how serious this oh, is. No. And, and try to get, try to get this child to say that there was a bad influence. He kept right. leading the questions in. Right. Well, what have they told you to do? Well, what have they, have they made you uncomfortable? Well, are they scaring you? Are they bothering you at school? And I, I pulled over and I called into the show, and of course they weren't going to let me on. Not going to let me on, but uh, you know the deal. I'll address that later. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, I'm like I have to find, I have to find this child. But uh, yeah, that's really what it all breaks down to is that you know he's not having. He said that the, he he said he told his parents, and they went in and they've met with the you know therapist many times, and this is all they can come up with is that maybe it's ADD. It's not disrupting his life it's not a negative force right. and uh they everybody wants to fit it into that category but it genuinely isn't most of the time no. and um uh, you know I, for i've had a few children um come to see me mostly it's adults and we can have the adults heal their children mm. but when the children come to see me and they're saying that they have seen as you said many spirits around them most of the time it's angels and archangels sure and that's what we are all protected by Yes. Um, these angels and archangels. In rare instances, there are these negative influences that come in. Um, and if, and I, I have to say this honestly, as being a Western medicine doctor 10 years ago, thinking I would be on a radio show talking about this and treating <laughs> children who have angels, archangels, and then sometimes negative influences around them and helping them rid themselves of these negative influences. Um, but as you're describing, yes, we are so much protected by the angels and archangels. So when you go into meditation, people have fear. We are still very protective we're in that, when we're in that space. Absolutely. And you really have flipped life on its yes, ear, have. haven't I you? Have. Yes. I mean, really. Are you yeah, I surprised myself. feeling good about it? Absolutely. It's amazing. Yeah, he's got great energy coming Oh, up. yeah, he does. He always has great energy. But, I mean, yeah. you really have put in the work. I know. 24 years, yeah, in Western yeah, medicine. We have, yeah. we amazing. Have. Talk to us about um, the new book that's coming up, Beyond. Beyond. Um, I have started writing it a couple months ago, and essentially the, the nutshell of the book is going to say that we're all right. Okay, so all of us, all of the belief systems that are out here are right. Okay, we're not excluding anybody when they come out to say, you know, if we're Christian or if we're Buddhist or Hindu or Muslim, um, there is no one who's wrong because God doesn't care what we call him or her or it. It could be consciousness. And so in the book, it describes, okay, here's what this belief system says, and this is how it's right. And then here's this belief system, and they're right too. And I want to write a bumper, I want to create a bumper sticker one day that says, um, God doesn't care what we call him or her as long as we call. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's great. And yeah. so Beyond goes to talking about um, not only how do we heal and talking about more of this path of pain and, and com versus comfort, or this piece, um, it's talking about these different quotients that I'm downloading, as you described. There are these quotients of how do we heal and how evolved are we, and it's based on this percentage system. And when we hit a 90%, okay, and another day I can go through all of what this is, but when we hit a 90%, which is essentially healing and letting go of all of what we need to heal, evolving and learning all of what we need to learn about God and spirit, um, and a couple of other things, um, when we hit the 90%, we can heal anything that comes our way. Not saying we won't ever have a disease or a problem, but whatever comes our way, we can heal it. Mm -hmm. When we hit a 76%, we actually can heal the specific issue that we've come in to, to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now we hit the other extreme, mm -hmm. and we say, what if we ever could ever, as a human being, and I don't know if we can do this, but if we hit 100, we can perform the literal miracles that some writings talk about. Yes. So it's this interesting range that I'm starting to be taught. Very fascinating. And I think I think people will really enjoy this book, too, because, 
you're breaking down. <laughs> Let's face it. People don't want to go out and investigate right, right. every religion out there, right? right? right. And what the, poli- we all want to know, but we want somebody to feed it, you know, right. with a little sugar on top. And so sure. you're really, you're really doing that. It's very fascinating. I can't wait. Now, when do you think this will be coming out? Um, in about six months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And what else? Um, we're going to wrap up the show at this point. Uh, just real quick, I want to you know say to the listeners again, um, if you wanted to send in a question uh, for the show, Tree and I are going to move on to uh, psychic mediumship questions. So you could text them in 716-602-1391 or go to Ask a Medium on Facebook in the search engine and go to Parax Radio. Start posting them uh, there for us or Dr. Pilk and we may be able, sometimes they accumulate after the show, so we may be able to uh, get some of those answers afterward also because I know we have to wrap it up Dr. Pilk has to move on but um, can you tell us what classes you're working on now where they can find you what events you have coming up where are you going to be sure Um, actually this weekend I'll be at the Spirit Expo and doing a presentation on fusion medicine talking about the fusion center and where it is now which is in um, Williamsville at the Body Essential um I'm also um, working on a fourth CD, which is a more advanced meditation CD, and specifically for adolescents, because right now I don't cover that section for meditation. Um, And of course, I have, I'm being told um, that I have 13 books that I'll be working on. And right now it's on my fourth, so keep your eyes open. Excellent. Wow. Very exciting. And um, we have a psychic fair coming up for the Ivy League Psychics on April 16th. Mm -hmm. Um, If you can be there, that would be great. Or maybe we could set up a table, okay, to sell, you know, to sell your products. So, uh, yeah, we'll have Dr. Pilk's things there. Uh, It's going to be the Ivy League Psychics supporting scleroderma awareness. And uh, that'll be a great event, too. Wonderful. And so, again, the name of your website is America's Meditation Doctor. 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 Com, yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you, so thank you so much for coming on, Dr. Pilk. You're amazing. Thank you and thank you for so stepping out of the traditional, you know, route and uh, fo- following where God led you to be. It's amazing. Thank Absolutely. You. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure having you on. We'll see you again soon then. Okay. Um, All right, we want to start getting on to some of these questions, guys. And I know that we have a few coming in here through text. Tree, how are you feeling? Are you ready? I'm good. This is so, like, enlightening and just peaceful and everything to where I'm, like, you know, I'm I'm ready to roll. Calm. I almost feel like I I went through a meditation. Well, you're holding the doll. It helps a lot when you (laughs) rub the baby doll. Bye-bye. And, um... I know it's just it's it's been amazing. Uh, yeah. It's been amazing to to sit and listen. I mean, I wish I could have gotten in for the full you know four part series that he just uh, taught here. But some of the times I was you know in the back of the academy and just in passing through the room. I mean, people really so quickly went from you know coming in here from the hustle and bustle of the streets and being kind of chaotic and having a lot of issues. You could see the stress on their faces, mm-hmm. and within an hour, I mean, they looked absolutely transformed it's uh revolutionary i mean what he's what he's doing and he's just come from such a different world 24 years in western uh medicine into this quite yeah. quite uh phenomenal Very um awesome. so uh let's see here i want to start getting on to these questions the first one um that we have coming in is and i'm trying to um, read this. She says, I just had an eye exam three weeks ago. Wondering if you could tell me why I'm seeing colors of blue and, uh, it looks like green and falling when I'm falling asleep at night. I've also had visions of myself being on a throughway and reading signs. This is kind of interesting because, um, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say, and this, I'm sorry, this come from a 713 number. Okay, I believe it's Debbie. Okay, is is her name. Uh, Debbie, this is an interesting question. Uh, Spirit had told me that I was supposed to talk a little bit about self-healing today in the in this manner. If you can picture um, different colored orbs in your head or colors in general and breathe them in, like if you were taking deep cleansing breaths, it will actually come into, you know, your body uh, through your mental state and alleviate pain. So bring you self-healing. And those colors are also closely connected with angel 
colors. Blue, green in particular is, I believe, what did we say, a Raphael, I believe, Archangel yes. Raphael, who uh, so. assists us in healing. So what it feels to me like, not even psychically, just from reading your question, I believe that Spirit asked me to bring this topic up for you and for the listeners, which, you know, coincides with what, you know, Dr. Pilk was saying here. Um, There are angels around us that bring healing energy. And the energy that they give off is always available. You need to uh, realize that that's what's going on and claim it for yourself. It is not the same as praying or hoping for something or wishing for something and um knowing that these two colors are around you i believe the blue is haniel um the blue is also connected with another archangel that escapes me at the moment but green is definitely Raphael, and it seems as though and i'm feeling with you that you may have some uh self-healing that needs to go on um i do feel like emotionally mentally uh sometimes stress there but i'm also feeling pain going down the right hand and the arm so i don't know if that's like arthritic or carpal tunnel i cannot prescribe or diagnose um but breathe that color in close your eyes in a meditational sort of state of mind and allow the color to sit where the pain is and then blow the air back out and that will help yeah i was getting it like when you were saying the blue and everything i was like that's blue is generally you know related with the um chakra as well for communication and it kind of feels like maybe she's uh, as my voice is going out now it almost feels like she's kind of like not really communicating well like she's not giving out verbally what she really wants to get out right a lot of the time absolutely so just kind of swallow that blue in there and i'm waiting out. for your third eye I know. bulge to pop <laughs> The red third eye, I can feel it. Can I rub it? Yeah, go ahead. A tree will get a mark on her forehead where the third eye is, and when she starts to show physical, actual, you know, impressions, it's 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 brewing, it it's out, coming. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm just like getting all excited. I'm gonna get the just camera my today. Was cutting there today, I know. <laughs> yeah, I could I could hear that. I was it just it's pretty try, wild. Try to get it out there, just for her to try to communicate a little bit more of of what she wants and different things especially Absolutely. people who kind of feels like there's takers yeah like people are kind of cutting her off people come into your life yeah debbie that are just like what can i get what can i get what can i get and i feel like you have you've had a tendency with a couple of them a female in particular mostly i was seeing males but a female in particular who just so, for so long you've been doing this that you're very easily manipulated and i actually feel like you feed it so i would even say a little codependence uh, possibly there but it's it's enough it's it's got to go the next three years is really going to be highly focused on this for you Mm -hmm. um you know self-healing self-evolution spiritual evolution and all of that getting free from the burdens of others and owning your own energy in a really big way um it's it's really pretty uh exciting i know we have a couple questions coming in here from is that para x or facebook i don't know both okay did you want the one from para x sure okay this one is from ceiling cat and they said the solar eclipse on March 8th falls on my natal moon. Any insights on that day for me? Ooh, big changes. It feels like there's changes. Like yeah. There's, but it feels like there's good, but there is letting go. There's a lot of letting go that needs to be done as well. It feels like there's, I don't know if you hold back, but it feels like there's some kind of pressure with holding back, but it also feels like there's changes coming. And with that shift of the moon, um, it's kind of bringing in that good and letting go of that bad. Or negative or whatever that, you know. Yeah, I'm really, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like a a four-week period of time where there's almost quiet, like, surrounding Mm -hmm. this. I just sense so much looking inward and analyzing situations. You know, I almost feel like if, you know, you're having a dream sometimes and you're watching it. Yeah. So you have a better understanding. It's almost like a clear cognizance. You have an understanding of every angle. I'm essentially watching, um... You ceiling cat. I'm essentially watching you watch your life, watch your relationships. And uh, you're analyzing what it's really all about and what is the next leg of your journey. You know, what, sort of like we were talking about earlier with Dr. Pope, you know, what are the lessons in it? And so um, I'm, I'm seeing that happen and then I'm seeing a little bit of change in what feels to me like a romantic partnership. Feels like, um, you know, the third week going into the fourth after this eclipse, it's almost like that increases and we're uh, preparing uh, for the future, you know, what is this going to be? How are we going to be working this thing out? What is this going to turn into? Definitely feels like one of those breathe deep and let it go. Like, don't fight it. Just breathe deep and let it go. Yeah, just go for it. But yeah. there's such a peace there. And yeah, I don't think, calming. honestly, like, I don't get the impression that normally this is there. Right. But it's like because of the eclipse. Of it, it's so, 
It's very calming. There's it a is. Calming it's like the download. It's like when we talk about yeah. the angels coming in and yeah. downloading information, but it's like you're do, you're doing it for yourself. You're allowing, kind of love like you said, it, allowing it to happen. Yes. So it's a whole new flow. It's really quite interesting, actually. Uh, we have another one coming in from here. Yes, we do. This one's from Facebook from Karen W. Okay. She says, my niece, Sheila, is moving in with her boyfriend. Will this work out okay with, for her? Well, let me take a look. Um... We don't want to get too much into other people's, you know, into other people's business. So I do try to, for ethical reasons, try to limit that um, unless it's about your own personal life. However, I will say this, you know, you're, you know, you're concerned, you're kind of keeping an eye out. It looks to me like I, as your niece, am watching the situation from some new angles uh, very early on. And some bubbles may be burst and some illusions will fall to the wayside, but I actually feel her coming out of it with uh, golden colors. I really feel her being like enlightened and figuring a lot out. And I think that it's, it's absolutely where she's supposed to be right now. And she is also very um, protected. She's quite smart. She likes to wear rose colored glasses um, for her own benefit, but she's quite aware uh once a couple things kick in that she's been doing it and she shuts it off like a light switch and there's a floodgate of information and this kid is not afraid to address her newfound wisdom i would say yeah if it, she feels very light though she feels yeah. like young like youth like light but it feels like this is probably going to be a good learning experience for her yeah yeah absolutely and you know well i don't well i don't necessarily feel that um you know that he is uh, 100% capable of sort of giving her what she needs. Mm-hmm. I feel like she is 100% capable of getting for herself what she needs. And so Absolutely. I don't feel like it's an element whatsoever. Um, I'm going to move on to some text unless we have, okay, from this angle, I want to go on to a 914 number. A friend of mine has a four-year-old who's having major behavioral issues at bedtime. Where is Dr. Pilk when you need him? Where are these questions when we're going to, okay. So uh, we'll answer this the best that we can, but... Uh, yeah, but we may also pass this along to him and have him post a later on. Yeah. So she's having uh, major behavioral issues at this bed at bedtime. I'm already seeing why, okay, as a medium. I'll explain this in a minute. Uh, she doesn't want the lights out. She doesn't want anything on the dressers or the shades up. She screams and cries throughout the night, and the family is in crisis every night. I feel like it could be spirits, but she is so young to determine it. Anything you can share that may help at three years old. Okay, this is one of the things I talk about at Empathic Means Lecture, which is coming up on, I believe, the 29th. You guys can Skype in internationally for that lecture um, to receive some training on this. It is hereditary. Empathic ability uh, at three years old can really kick up. At three years old, the human brain um, starts to tap into to certain brain waves that allow us to see spirit more. Because they are only three years old, they are not the best at explaining what exactly it is that they're seeing. Mm-hmm. And even at 50, 60 years old, because of the society we live in, we're not the best at explaining it. So we can understand that this would be overwhelming. The best thing that you could do for this child is to allow her to express herself, allow her to, through drawings, right, or just open dialogue, allow her to express what it is that she's experiencing, and we don't want to put a label on it that it's bad necessarily. Um, And the last thing we want to do is to make her feel as though she shouldn't be talking about it. Right. No one should be showing signs that, oh, you know, we think this is paranormal. Um, everything's paranormal. It's energy. It's all around us all the time. Her brain developed last year in such a way that she can now see them. She's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, people around her who are more open to uh, discussing it and finding the solutions for comfort would be the wisest thing to have you know, around her uh, right now. Trey, what are you getting with this? Uh, Definitely right there with you. I'm also kind of getting to with the empathic ability that she absorbs so much throughout the course of the day, regardless of where it's coming from or who's around her. I mean, whether it's through daycare, that's going to be chaotic. And, you know, with her parents, family, you know, any friends, any, anything at all, even from animals. So it feels like she's absorbing so much. It's going to come out at some point. And generally that can be at nighttime and, as everybody knows, it's almost impossible sometimes to study your mind mm. at night. So if you do have spirit floating around you and coming with you, it's going to be even more chaotic 
at those times as well. The tradition, the traditional belief was, if we look at it, paranormal, spiritual, whatever, was that there was almost like a witching hour, right? And it kicks Mm -hmm. up at 3 a.m. And it goes from 3 a.m. to 5.30 in the morning. And it actually starts at like 11 at night. I mean, we can hear them battering around at the Ivy League, you know, come 10.30 at night. You know, here they come. Here comes the spirit activity. For a medium, it is like... um, you know, the train Impossible. stays like Grand Central Station yeah. all night long. She's going to need to learn the tools to handle that. I would strongly recommend coming in for empathic means. I would also recommend, um, you know, feel free to contact me. I can give you some other tools that can help her. Um, we don't start really training, working with the kids here until they're about six years old. But there are things that you as, you know, mom, dad, aunt can start bringing into her world to make her feel more secure and uh, empowered um, because certainly we do have the upper hand. And first and foremost, we need to believe and know that at all times. She wants the lights on, leave the lights on. She doesn't want stuff on her dresser, get it off of there. Shades down, perfect. Whatever they need. A lot of mediums mm-hmm. actually sleep on a sofa Usually alone, empaths have a tendency, studies show, to sleep alone with their face in the crack of a wall or whatever. And that's <laughs> yeah. how we're comfortable. Yeah. She needs to hide, let her hide. Um, but I would also recommend, because we don't want to enable, give her objects that will make her feel like she wants to look over there. Clearly, some spirits are touching or coming to her through areas that make her uncomfortable, whether it's through the windows or it's touching her stuff. Mm -hmm. So put up a statue of an angel. Put up a picture of a grandma who passed away or somebody she might, you know, recognize that makes her feel better. A picture of Jesus or, uh, you know, a Native American, maybe dream catcher, some feathers. You know, give her tools that she can use also to clear them out. Feathers, crystals, stones, uh, ghosts in the closet spray, white sage. (laughs) Put, Put it all around the, the room. Bed, on, the, on that dresser. She right needs now. to be part of the ceremony. Oh, definitely. I mean, it, I always tell people, too, like, when they're going to go and do things and take care of things or have somebody come in their home to take care of something, they need to be a part of it because that's their space. They occupy that space, and that's their energy in there. So you have to own that, too. So I would definitely, like, I'm right there with you, too, with the whole crayons, coloring book things. Give her paper. Let her draw things out. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes when they verbally can't communicate, like children, they can't bring it out or say the right words. That paper can say a, a thousand words. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, many blessings with that. And uh, mm-hmm. please be in touch. Um, again, you can find me on Facebook, private message me there, and I'll give you uh, more information to work with her for the next few years. And I would recommend getting her into the academy as soon as she can, you know, really sit in a chair. Um, okay. So we have another one coming in here from a 541 number. Hey, Ivy, my brother died suddenly on January 29th. Ooh, that was very, very recent. Okay. Um, I wanted to know if he has been trying to contact anyone or had any messages for me or my family. A lot of odd things have been happening in my home that I can't explain. I was thinking he was contacting me because I've always been sensitive uh, to the point that it causes me distress. Should I maybe try and learn how to channel my energy and contact him on my own in the future? Of course, But um, the thing is this, having a death in the family already will increase your abilities, having a near-death experience, Mm -hmm. going under to have a tooth removed even, right? Going under, um, you know, being unconscious for a period of time, um, you know, a pregnancy. uh, There are so many different things that can increase your abilities. The fact that you just lost him already just kicked you up to the next level Mm -hmm. uh, with your intuition. You're going to need to learn to manage that regardless of, of really whether you're trying to communicate with him or, you know, almost become a psychic medium. So, yes, I would highly, highly recommend it. It also um, feels to me like there were a lot of problems in through the chest with him, and then I go down into the stomach area. I feel like there was impact, okay? A lot of pressure in through here. And know that he is doing very well. I do feel like a lot of the chaotic energy is him coming around. Um, He's showing me being around. And also, I feel like with moms, I'm assuming that mom... Um, that mom is still here. He's making reference to being with mom. Um, but I want to say it this way. It's a lot of it is really literally coming from you. Mm-hmm. So the energy from the heightened ability is yeah. kicking up the energy on the outside because other spirits are also attracted to that energy. What are you getting with this? Uh, I was immediately getting a headaches. Right, boom, right there at the right side. Um, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of pressure. And this is, obviously, this is understandable because it, it was so recent that he had passed and everything, too. But, um, 
He's he's definitely, you know, he's over where he needs to be. He's good where, where he is. He's sending his love. It's like he's trying to just kind of basically say, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm good where I'm at. Please, please try not to stress so much. Like, a lot of it is putting it, like you were saying, on herself and the family, which is understandable. But he's happy where he's at, and he's over there. And when he comes around, sometimes it's almost like that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of laughing because it's almost an electric like, volcano. It will coming through. It's, it's like, like he just kind he's of comes like a freight through. train. It's yeah. almost like he kicks the chair on accident, like yeah. stubbing the toe. I feel like he's a little bit of a mess. Clumsy, this is what he's showing. I see the lights flickering. Yeah. I feel like things running out of energy. I feel like light bulbs going. He's trying to. Okay, here's a good. Here's a good. Like have you ever seen the movie Ghost? I was okay. just watching that the other night. Yeah. Where I haven't seen this in a million years, but yeah. every now and again they use this as a reference where the where the guy is using his energy is trying to train him on the subway how to kick a can, mm-hmm. right, yeah. or how to push the can, how or to the push the bottom, or whatever that was, yeah, yeah, or the, or the penny or whatever, penny, and yeah. and he's a little bit of a mess, okay. But you have to you have to look at it this way: he has a tremendous amount of energy. He passed away before his time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be a fabulous communicator. He already is, and so that would be the weird energy. You're absolutely right. I, you know, um, I'm so sorry for your loss, but just stop and say when you sense him being around in any way, um, just say, what is it that you want to say? And know that sometimes he doesn't have anything to say. Other times I feel like he's going to be putting a lot of signs and symbols in your head. Mm -hmm. That's That's going to require psychic mediumship training. Get into the Academy for level one. We have one starting in March. I will train you in what those symbols mean and how to receive the messages accurately beyond that. I would say definitely start taking a journal too, writing things down, whether it's from dreams or when you're awake, start writing those off thoughts that come into your head, something that reminds you of him, something that makes you laugh. Write it all down because it feels like to me there's almost like a decryption, like a message is being... Absolutely. He's already, yeah, he's already yeah. trying to get, so trying to give the messages. But again, I feel just a lot of talk about the mother, a tremendous amount and and, he, and okay. healing messages. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, he's saying everything's okay. And I'm, it's I'm okay. pleased with the way that it went as far as, you know, the funeral and all of that is concerned. Every, yeah. Everything went the way that it was supposed to be. Um, I feel like I'm looking at like the, you know, the ashes or something being moved. I feel like a couple different times. So something interesting. Um, now, uh, thank you for that question. We have a thank you, uh, Ivy and Tree, especially about the four-year-old girl message. You're very welcome. Yes, you're very welcome. Um, okay, guys, if you are, okay, some up, some uh, updated information here on things that are going on. If you're interested in attending classes at the Ivy League Psychic Academy, you can attend in person uh, at 4511 Main Street, Amherst, New York, uh, which is by uh, Williamsville in the Buffalo area, and you can Skype in. We are also making the classes downloadable uh, so that internationally, you guys, from the comfort of your own home, uh, homes can uh, get the certifications or certificates that we offer here if you were able to be here in person. We have meditation classes coming up. We have tarot, Reiki, astrology. We have some interesting things going on here for children and a couple psychic mediumship development classes going on. We also have an Ivy League Psychics Fair supporting scleroderma, scleroderma awareness. Sclero. Sclero. Sclero awareness. Um, And uh, we're doing that April 16th at uh, Seneca Hose. There's more information up on the website as well as on Facebook coming up for that. So please, you know, come out and support a great cause. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, mind, body, soul influence at this particular mm-hmm. fair because we are helping people with this disability, uh, you know, to feel better. But it's also supporting local artists, authors, jewelry makers, tree. You'll be there selling your crystals, oh my uh, God, crystal I, jewelry. I don't think I'm going to be able to sit down at this one. I'm going to have my jewelry on display. I'm going to be reading in a gallery with a couple of the other girls doing a tag team reading uh, gallery. I'm also going to be offering private readings after that gallery up until uh, 7 o'clock when we're, when we're all done. And uh, yeah, I don't You're think gonna I'm going to be a busy be, girl. I'm also I'm doing a gallery down. there. I'm not doing private reads because I'm running it, but I am doing a, a gallery show. So I believe the students are going on. The Ivy League Psychics will be doing it. Now, is this free to the public? Or are we asking for a donation back to the Sclera Foundation? Yes. Something Okay, but it's very minimal even if there is a request for a donation. So the students will be putting on a gallery show there at, I believe, 3 o'clock. And then I'll be putting mm-hmm. on my show uh, later on in the night. And uh, I know my my uh, psychic mediumship daughter there, Rainin, uh psychic medium, will also be in that gallery show. Now, yes. you guys are doing 
a gallery, a tag gallery night here at here. the Academy. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, that is going to be here at the Academy. The first one, I'm so excited about this. Uh, the first one will be on Sunday, March 20th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. It's going to be roughly between t 6 to 10 uh, medium students here from the Academy. Um, they could be level one students, level two students, or any of your graduates. And we're all basically going to stand up in groups of three to four and read in those groups for about about 20 minutes. And then at the end, we're all going to circle the corral, so to speak. We're going to circle the group and we're going to take questions and we're going to try to get everybody that connection or those answers and stuff that they're looking for. And we're super excited about this because a lot of mediums, I would you know assume there's not a lot of gallery experience. So. Excellent. Okay, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. All right, guys, uh, tune in for the next Ask a Medium show Tuesday night. And if you want to watch the live show following up here on Ustream TV, that starts at 830, where I will also be taking your questions. Find us on the Ivy League Psychic Academy.com, where we are raising up the next generation of lightworkers. Good night. Night.